Welcome to part 16 of my procedural node series in Blender. Today we're going to take a look at creating a noise texture and then mirroring it on different axes. And then, you know, stylize a little bit, add some different colors, add some transparency as well. You can see it's not completely symmetrical in some points. Uh, you could make it that way, but I just decided uh, to distort it a little bit further and just make it a little bit more interesting that way. You could also use this with a Voronoi or a Musgrave. But, uh, you know, I chose noise, so I'll show you how I do that. To start off, why don't we just leave our cube as is. We'll try something a little different this time. Let's come over here to the modifiers panel and add a bevel modifier. Turn it up to five segments there and just enable smooth shading with that submenu. Then I'm going to come over here and change this top right area to my 3D viewport and then change this middle area just to my shader editor. Make it really big. Hit N to get rid of this shelf on the right there. And then I'm going to get rid of these gizmos overlays here just by clicking this stuff. You can see this cube a little bit better. Let's get rid of this principled shader and bring in a noise texture. Just make sure that uh, we're in rendered mode in the top right and we can view what's going on here. And then let's go ahead and bring in a color ramp and just bring in the sides a little bit so we can see a more contrasted image as well, just like this. Let's go ahead and click on that noise texture, hit Control T, brings up the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Make sure this is coming out of object going to that vector on the mapping node, just like that. Next what we can do is bring in a separate XYZ node and place it right after that mapping node, then bring in a combine XYZ node and place it right after that one. Now let's plug X into X, Y into Y, and Z into Z, just like that. We can actually see we have the same image uh, that we had before we added these two nodes, but now we're going to do something to these uh, noodles here in the middle. So we're going to put this math node here, but instead of add, I'm going to change this to absolute. And now we can see this mirroring effect going on here. I'm going to bring up this gizmo so we can see which the, the x-axis is here again. It's just this going you know, from the left to the right of this little screen up here. And we can see it's mirrored, not along the x-axis, but um, like along the y and the z-axis. So let's duplicate this absolute and place it on this Y noodle this time. We can see an even further level of mirroring going on here. And then let's do it one more time and place it on this Z here. Just spread these apart so we can see them. And now what we can see, I'm going to turn off this uh, overlay here again. We can see each face is mirrored vertically and horizontally in its own pattern there. It's not actually six distinct images. It's only three. Uh, each opposite face, uh, those two are the same basically top and bottom are the same image etc. So we've already pretty much covered the topic of this video but I'm gonna keep going just to make a more interesting texture here. Let's start by adjusting this color ramp. I'm gonna change this to uh, exact values here. The black I'm gonna set at 0.47 and this white I'm gonna bring down to 0.56. I'm gonna bring in another color ramp for right after this and we're gonna just set up the colors of our texture here. Uh, I'm going to have uh, seven points in total, so I'm going to bring in five points. Zero and one are just going to stay the same. So the next point I'm going to put at point one nine. Next point I'm going to put at point three nine. The next point is going to be at point five four. Next point is going to be at point six eight, and then the last point is going to be at point nine two, just like that. Then let's set up these colors. Uh, this first one here, I'm going to set it kind of an orange color. I like the look of that. Just something like this looks pretty good. These next two colors are both going to be black. I'm going to zoom out here a bit. So set that one to black here as well. This third color, or I guess the fourth color in total, is going to be at kind of a turquoise color. Make that a bit lighter. And then this next color is going to be black. Same with the color after that. Oops, I moved that a little bit. Click on that guy. Turn this to black as well. And this last color is going to stay white. So um, yeah, it's a pretty interesting texture here. I already like the look of this, but we're going to do one more thing, and that's make this white area transparent. So to do that, let's go ahead and bring in a mix shader and put it right here. And let's bring in a transparent shader as well, and just kind of put it right here for now. Um, we are going to make another color ramp here. I'm just going to bring one in from scratch and just run this factor into here. And uh, we'll change this to constant and just kind of put this in the middle somewhere. 
that looks pretty good so far. We can always change that around, but we're going to run that into the factor here. And we want the white areas to be um, transparent. So we are going to plug this into the bottom socket here. So we're going to plug this color. Um, move this over here. We're going to first actually plug it into a principal BDSF here, and then plug that principal BDSF into this top socket here. So uh, it doesn't look like much yet if we click on here because we have to do one more step and that is come down here to the material properties tab and change this blend mode and I'm going to change this to alpha uh, alpha clip or alpha hashed works well uh, alpha blend has this weird thing where it kind of shows the back through the front um, you know I'm not sure why it does that but uh, I'm going to change this to alpha clip and see how that looks Okay, not bad. We're masking a little bit too much here, so I'm going to adjust this here so we can get more of our texture coming through. So something like this looks pretty good. I like the look of that. You know, it's got a little bit of that white. Maybe change this to 0 0.54. 0 0.55. 0 0.56. There we go. 0 0.56. I like the look of that. Next up, let's create a little bit more distortion further on down the... Uh, the line towards the texture coordinate node. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in another noise texture here. And actually, before I forget, I'm going to decrease the scale of this noise texture right here to 2. Just going to wait for it to load in here. There we go. So then let's decrease this one as well here to 2. And uh, we can see we ruined the symmetry. So we'll have to bring that back um, with a mix RGB node. This is part of the setup where we plug object into that color too as well. It's starting to take a little while to load in here. So plug that in there. I'm going to set the mix to 0.89. Just like that. So uh, you can see it's not on center here. If you recall in some of my other videos, the way to fix this is to duplicate this mix and just change this to subtract. And then make it so both these factors add up to 1. So this first one is 0 0.89, so we just need to change the second factor to 0 0.11 and it should work. Just like that. So now we can see it's all fairly symmetrical again. I think there is some variation if you zoom in because uh, that noise texture did change some stuff around. I'm going to change this setup here a little bit so we can adjust this again. Let's bring in a value node. Let's go ahead and bring in a math node as well. We're going to change this math node to subtract plug this value into the bottom socket there, change this top value to 1. And so if we change this to 0.89, we can plug this value right into that first factor. And then what's going on here is we have 1 minus whatever number this is, it's going to come out of this socket. So we can then plug this socket right into the subtract factor. And it should work now where we adjust this and everything kind of updates as you adjust it. So I'd like that uh, set up a little bit better. So to one more thing I'm going to do here is just make it so these edges are a little jagged here and the way uh, I like to do that is just by bringing in one more noise texture and just placing it further up here. So this noise texture I'm going to change it to be much larger scale because I want smaller detail there. So I'm going to change this to 20 here and then bring in this mix and place it right here and uh, I'm going to bring this object and plug it into color 2 once it loads in there for me. just like that. And uh, I think I recall this is just kind of a subtle effect if this factor is too high. Let's see what it looks like. I think I'm going to have to bring it down quite a bit. Yeah, so let's try 0.3. Again, it's going to ruin our symmetry, but that's okay. I didn't want it completely symmetrical. I just wanted it mostly symmetrical. So there we go, we're done. This is my stylized symmetrical noise shader with transparency uh, it's a lot of fun to play around with. I, I like this one here. We could obviously change this up. Why don't we try just putting in a Voronoi texture in here for fun. See what it looks like. Just bring this out, place this here, and then run the distance into both of these here.
yeah, kind of cool. Um, you know, you maybe you could create some procedural lily pads or something like that with this setup. Um, you know, food for thought. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, and hope you're able to see what I was doing. Thanks for watching.